Geostorm. Kind of a crazy concept if you ask me. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on guys? Thank you very much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Geostorm. I do appreciate it, but before we get into the review, help your boy out. Go ahead and click that subscribe button, become one of my subscribers, click the bell so you can be notified, and go ahead and give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So now, we have Geostorm starring Gerard Butler. And I remember when the trailer first dropped for this movie, it was more of a, a course of a teaser. It didn't show any actors or any actresses or anything like that. It was just a small teaser, maybe 30 to 60 seconds long. And it was just showing a bunch of worldwide catastrophic events of weather and that just destroying the earth. And it looked crazy. I was like, wow, that's just, you know, insane. You know what I'm saying? I remember like the last shot of the movie, like last shot of the trailer, excuse me, that they showed that plane that was like, frozen in the air and just kind of like fell through the sky or whatever and i remember like i was just like you know, like whoa okay you know this movie really does interest me but then they came out with the real trailer trailer one and trailer two and it really piqued my interest because that's when we got to see all the characters involved especially gerard butler of course that you know from uh 300 which debuted 10 years ago uh, actually if you think about it february of 2007 and he is a leading man a uh, great leading man you know he can do a serious role like 300 or he can do romantic comedies like he was doing with katherine heigl uh not too long ago and about this movie like i was really interested in it going in um it's being directed by dave devlin um, this is his first theatrical run or whatever. And for the most part, I think he did a good job. And this movie right here, to me, in my opinion, is for those people that are just curious. Like if you call yourself a curious George and you're really into experiments and science and things like that and just always asking yourself, like, you know, what happened? If you ever was on Google or YouTube and were like, hey, what would happen if you just typed in, hey, what would happen if the moon was destroyed or what would happen, you know, if all the bees on the planet, you know, were to disappear and just things like that, you know, just weird, you know, obscure things. You know, this movie is definitely for you. Now, I'm not saying that if you're not into those things, this movie is not for you. But for all the curious Georges out there like myself that are always asking, like, what if, you know, this movie is definitely for you. And I say what if because it's just like another disaster movie or, you know, where the world is coming to an end. And I, I don't mean to say that like, hey, you know, I enjoy just seeing a bunch of, you know, destruction. But at the same time, you know, when I don't know when you're watching it. Well, I was going to say when you're watching the weather and there, you know, the meteorologist is doing a forecast. You know, he said, hey, it's going to be snowing tomorrow or raining or whatever. I don't think people just like, hey, I wonder if a gajillion tons of water fell down from the sky. But I mean, if you're into that type of thing, you know, this movie is definitely for you. Um, some people will call this a guilty pleasure. Those are the type of movies that are bad or so bad that they're good. And a lot of people try to put a, a certain a certain movie in that category that I just don't agree with. And I'm finna name this movie that Geostorm reminded me of. And this is one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm not saying that it's the best movie of all time, but it's one of my favorites. And that movie is Armageddon, starring uh, Bruce Willis, directed by Michael Bay. That I think this came out like 1998, 1999. I love this movie. It's fantastic. It is a bit over the top, but at the same time, there is a good sense of love and family in this movie that really came to the forefront towards the end. And you know what I'm talking about if you've seen this movie. And the reason why I'm bringing this movie up is because Geostorm, in my opinion, is kind of a dumbed down version of Armageddon because a lot of people call Armageddon dumb and unrealistic and you know this and that or whatever but like I said it had a lot of heart to it you know Geostorm had a lot of stupidity and silly stuff in it as well and I still enjoyed it but you know it did not have that sense of heart and love like Armageddon and when I was watching Geostorm I just kept thinking about Armageddon or whatever but the plot is just pretty simple I mean there like is of course this is 
kind of, uh, you know, not too far in the distant future, but, you know, just a few years away at the very beginning of the movie. They're talking about, hey, in 2019, a bunch, you know, just storms are going crazy. And, you know, they were just destroying people here and there and people around the world decided to fight back. And like, you know, hey, you know, we got to do something about this. We're not just going to let another tornado or lightning storm or whatever destroy us. You know, we got to do something together, band together, put all of our differences aside and, you know, to where they create the device that controls the weather or whatnot. Now, of course, you're going to have some people that are upset with that because they, you know, are super extremists and want to be natural with everything, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, you can't please everybody. And the person that they decided to put into in charge of this project, this Geostorm project or whatnot, is Gerard Butler, our main uh, character in this movie. And for the most part, he did a fine job. I mean, he's just supposed to lead the movie. You know, he's a strong guy. He has a very strong presence. You know, like I said three times before, you know, he really is a leading man. And to be honest with you as well, this movie is kind of racist. Um, it is because and, but I'm not going to take any points away from that, because especially now with how things are going on in this country right now. You know, it's kind of obvious that, you know, a lot of the, the bad people are coming out of the closet to cause, you know, you know, mayhem and just ruckus, you know, throughout the land. You know what I'm talking about. But the movie is kind of self-aware with that because I don't want to spoil it for you. But as you see in the trailer, the device they have to control the weather around the world is being taken control over by a certain person or a certain group of people. And I'm not going to ruin that for you here, but that is one thing that they make the movie great. But when the person that is behind all this reveals themselves, you know, they um, do. I want to say this because it's a spoiler. Uh, you know, they just kind of just like, hey, you know, we can use this device to kind of get rid of all the enemies around the world that we have. And, you know, throughout this movie, I kept there was a large number of brown people that kept getting destroyed. Like the only other country that wasn't consistently, you know, had a large population of brown people was Russia. But you had Dubai, you had Afghanistan, uh, you had China. Well, those are not brown people. Um, and you also had Rio de, ne uh, Rio de Janeiro um brazil they had a number of places that were just you know filled with brown people and those kept getting destroyed i really didn't see any white people you know get destroyed for the most part really didn't see any black people either but at the same time i was just like huh y'all trying to say that you know all the brown people in this movie are evil or or bad or your enemy you know i kind of did you know pick that up or whatever but the film is kind of being self-aware so i don't know if the director was trying to, you know, speak in code or something like that, coded language, but it is something um, that I picked up. Something else that I did like about the movie was a sense of mystery. I mean, this was kind of like a world's Waldo uh, type of scenario because this is a global event with a lot of strings attached. And the main character, him being Gerard Butler, he just really doesn't know who is behind all this, who is pulling all the strings, you know. And I really did like that because instead of just like a disaster flick or whatever, you know, you did get a good sense of mystery. Um, there is another character in this movie that plays uh gerard butler's uh younger brother and they you can call them the lawson brothers or whatever and like i'm looking up his name right now was it jim sturgis you know so gerard butler's character is jake lawson and his younger brother is max lawson but max lawson's real name is jim sturgis and i remember him seeing him back in 2008 in that movie 21 where they were car counting in vegas or whatever with kevin spacey he took his role in this movie too seriously or he just was overacting. I mean, he was he was like acting so hard to where like this is going to be the last role of his entire life. And, you know, I kind of respect that you should, you know, always give 100 percent. But he was overacting more than everybody else, you know, just trying to, you know, explain the severity of the situation. But I was like, dude, calm down. I mean, I know you're nervous, but, you know, your tone is not matching with everybody else. And I kind of did find that uh, distracting. Um, there are also just kind of bits of uh, comedy here and there that I did appreciate that they kind of make me chuckle here and there. But of course, the main thing that you're coming to see this movie is you want to see destruction. You want to see chaos. You want to see mayhem. And there was a good amount of that. I mean, it was crazy. There was one scene where it was just like a lightning storm and like it was entertaining. But I kind of clocked out at the same time because it was just so much stuff going on. I really just couldn't tell. 
Um, but all the destruction, I mean, you had lightning storms, tornadoes, hurricanes, giant heat waves, you know, the temperature dropping a billion below zero and people are freezing instantly. And, you know, it's just, it was kind of scary too. Like not for me, the audience member, but I can, I'm trying to put myself, well, of course it's going to be scary if you're sitting next to somebody and then they are frozen. You're like, Oh crap. And then you got to run the other way, you know, like running from weather. How do you run from weather? And, you know, in a sense or whatever. So, you know, um, it had that, um, there are a number of uh, cliches in this movie that I'm very frustrated about because it's kind of towards the end of the first act, uh, towards the uh, beginning of the second act. You know, you know that cliche where they're like, oh, my gosh, where's my phone? Hey, Bobby, why did I use the word Bobby? I don't think I, I know one person named Bobby. Hey, Todd, I have a secret. I have to tell you, meet me on the cliff at 10 o'clock. Don't be late, you know, and then what always happens is in, in movies when they do stuff like that before they can meet at the cliff at 10 o'clock, somebody dies and it's like, dude, why don't you just say this over the phone or whatever, you know, and you could be saying this well, they're tracking this and they're tracking that. But, you know, it did have the cliches like that in this movie. And it's just really a dumbed down, fun, silly mess. I mean, I did have fun with this movie. I did. Other than the part where I realized it was kind of racist. Uh, but this is, movie is not to be taken seriously at all. I mean, it's, it's just not. If, if you just want to clock out and just, you know, this is like a definition of a great escape. You just want to see some, you know, a bunch of destruction and just like a bunch of buildings fall over each other. Something that hopefully we'll never see in the real world. Uh, intentional, intentional or not. You know, this movie is for you. Uh, if you want to go to a matinee or something like that, you know, have fun. I think you'll, you know, enjoy yourself. Um, it is extremely silly. Like the past last 10 to 15 minutes, I was just sitting there in the chair in the theater, just kind of laughing to myself like this is just so crazy and over the top silly. I mean, there is no way in hell some of these characters should have survived in this movie, but they did because, you know, the movie has to have a happy ending, you know, but it's really not much, you know, anything. it's not much more to it than this movie. I mean, you have great actors like Gerard Butler and Andy Garcia, who was in uh, the Oceans trilogy. You have Ed Harris, who's been in over 100 movies, you know, and a few other people's too. Jim Sturgis that I mentioned before, Daniel Wu. You know, it's a pretty decent cast. It's a pretty diverse cast. Um, and, you know, I, I, ha I had fun with it. I mean, if 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 you drink, if you smoke or whatever, you'll definitely have a great time, you know, watching this movie, um, you know, even if you're sober. But, hey, you know, if if being intoxicated is your type of thing, you're really going to enjoy this movie. So it's not to be taken seriously. Like I said, it is entertaining, um, but it is over the top silly destruction. If I had to rate Geostorm out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 6 out of 10. Yes, a 6 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen Geostorm or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, oh, wait a minute. There was a there was like a large plot hole. Where did I leave off of my outro? Uh, give me the thumbs up. Something that just really didn't make sense to me is if the satellites around the world are going crazy and just causing all types of destruction, can't y'all just send up a bunch of missiles to blow them out of the sky, blow them out of space? I mean, I don't know. I was just kind of thinking that kind of towards the climax, towards the end. But, you know, I guess that would have uh, ended the movie in 20 minutes, which constitutes to bad writing. But I still want to give it a six. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Become one of my subscribers so you can get all the content that I have to provide. You can also click the bell so you can be notified when I do make uploads. Also, guys, uh, go to my website. Check me out there. Bookmark it. I do write written reviews. And also look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy for you guys by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of Geostorm starring Gerard Butler. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace. <laughs>